Hi friends, I'm Ms. Katie, a youth services librarian at Skokie Public Library. I'm excited to see you again for our fifth video in the Math Party series. Today we're talking all about spatial relationships. You may be asking, what in the world does spatial relationships even mean? Well, it means the location of one object in relation to another. Here are a few examples that will make this easier to understand. The ball is behind the chair. The cat is under the table. The book is on the bed. The fan is above the table. The hat is in the box. As you can see, we use spatial relationships to communicate things to one another all the time. It tells someone where else to look, where to find something, and how to best navigate to reach it. Babies begin to understand spatial awareness very early by following objects and movements with their eyes and reaching for items close to them or putting their hands on our faces. I think we've all experienced that before. Toddlers do this by crawling, scooting, or walking toward an object of interest. Understanding spatial relationships allows us to locate objects and safely navigate the world. I'd like to share a book with you that uses spatial relationships to tell the story in a really neat way. It's one of my favorites. Many of you probably know some of Eric Carle's books. He was a talented writer and illustrator who inspired so many people with his creativity and imagination. This is The Secret Birthday Message, written and illustrated by Eric Carle. I am reading this with permission from the publisher, Harper Collins Children's Books. This book was published in 1972. The Secret Birthday Message by Eric Carl. On the night before Tim's birthday, he found a strange envelope under his pillow. He sat straight up in his bed and opened the letter. Inside was a secret message. And this is what it said. When the semicircle comes up, look for the biggest star. Below it, you will see an oval. Behind that is the triangle. Go in. Look up to find a circle. Crawl through. Go down the stairs. These look like stairs. Walk straight ahead to a rectangle. Open it. You will see another rectangle. Climb up and through. That's where you'll find your birthday gift. Happy birthday. Okay, so now it's time for us to decode the secret birthday message. When the moon comes up, look for the biggest star. That is a very big star. Below it, you'll see a rock. Behind that is the entrance to a cave. Go in, so we'll go through there. Look up to find a round opening. Crawl through, and there's also you bats. Yikes. Go down the stairs. Walk straight ahead to a door and open it. You will see an opening. 
climb up, up the ladder and through, that's where you'll find your birthday gift. And in that opening, what can we see? That's right, there's two blue eyes. I see what looks like might be an, a brown ear and maybe the top of a sweet, wet, pink nose. Hmm, let's see. Oh my goodness, it's a puppy. Happy birthday. Can we find our way back? Can you find your way back? Let's see the next page. So let's see, here is our secret birthday gift. Let's go back through the opening and down the ladder. We'll go through the door and up the stairs. We'll crawl back through the round opening and exit the cave. We'll pass by the rock that sits below the brightest star and we'll go back home while the moon is still high. Great job, everyone. So that is the secret birthday message by Eric Carl. I hope you enjoyed the secret birthday message as much as I did. I love how the process of finding the gift was just as thrilling as the surprise itself. Today, Orson and I have a fun do-it-yourself puzzle activity that will help develop spatial thinking. These DIY puzzles are great because they are easy to make and you can create them for a child of a certain age or skill level. If you're new to doing puzzles, you may want to stick to five or six pieces. If you're a more experienced puzzle solver like Orson, you could make a puzzle with 12 pieces or more. Before we begin, I'd like to thank the Erickson Institute's Early Math Collaborative for the inspiration for this activity. First, you'll need to choose an empty cereal, snack, or this is a pasta box. You cut out the image on the front of the box. This will most likely be a rectangle. Flip the cardboard over so the image side is face down and use a pencil or marker to draw the lines for the puzzle pieces. Cut along the lines with scissors. The shapes of the pieces and spatial reasoning allow you to decide where the piece will fit in the larger puzzle. Maybe you'll need to turn or flip the piece. Does a piece go below or next to another? You can also look at the picture cues and letters on each piece to fit them together that way. And, and voila! You, you have, have a puzzle. puzzle! Thanks for joining us today. Next month, we'll be talking all about sets and sorting. We can't wait to see you then. Take care, everyone. Bye. Bye.